Top of the morning, everybody. Eric, secondary machine. Out in the shop this morning. Sunday. It's really early. Um, I'm going to look forward to uh, puttering around out here today and listening to some football on the radio. Should be a pleasant enough day. Project for this morning is that I am still working on putting the uh, power feed onto the ENCO. And so the uh, part of that job is going to require that uh, the lead screw be extended by about one inch 300,000. And actually less than that is probably one two fifty because I'm I'm actually just getting started on making the part to extend it. Um and three hundred's gonna one inch three hundred is gonna be a little long. Um but anyway, so yesterday <laughs> I pull this entire lead screw out, thinking I'm gonna come over here to the lathe and run it through the spindle bore. I think you know where this is headed. And I'm going to drill and tap the end of it so it's nice and straight. Actually, I was going to face this off so it's perfectly straight. Drill and tap this so that I can put a stud in here going to my 1 inch 300, which will be, you know, I'm going to take one of these and lop it off and it's just going to screw on there. And then I had planned to just uh, to bring this part down to final dimension so it's just nice and perfectly runs perfectly true with this. Well, the spindle bore is too small. Actually, you can see where this thread is boogered up from the previous owner. Did not know about this till after I had the machine, but it doesn't matter. Um, and so it starts to slide in. It gets to, I mean, it's so close. It wanted to go, but um, in the go, no go world, it was a no go. And so you see just how small this is. It's really kind of a shame because it's a really awesome lathe. I really enjoy running it, but uh Anyhow, so I had to come up with a workaround. You can see over here, I started messing around with the clousing, thinking about, you know, maybe I could, maybe I could get it hooked to the front here and go straight down into it. It's really important to get that. Either way, my point is, no, I couldn't come up with a really good workaround over here. I pulled the ram out as far as it would go, and yeah, I could get to it, but it was just kind of hokey. I was going to have to go at an angle and match everything up. And so, you know, for me, part of the enjoyment in having smaller machining tools is coming up with workarounds, you know. Um, yeah, it would have been nice to take that out to the other shop where just up until here recently, at a much bigger lathe with almost a two-inch spindle bore, would have gone right on there and I could have done the work really quick. But part of the enjoyment in the hobby for me is to take these smaller tools and, and see what you can do with them, come up with workarounds, and uh, still make it happen, right? So anyway, um, my main objective here was to get that drilled and tapped nice and straight. And so what I ended up coming up with was I built this. Now this is a slip fit on the end here. And then I drilled this four thou under over here because I could, got it on there nice and straight. And then I came over here and uh, slip fit that on there. And then I just used the power drill to go in there with the correct size tap bit and uh, got it on there nice and straight. Um, basically, by making that hole about 4,000 under, uh, when I started to drill it, that drill bit is going to take the path of least resistance and just go, you know, straight in there. And so I'm confident that I've got that on there really nice and straight. I'm hoping I'm not going to have any wobble to it. Um, I was actually watching Randy Richards in the shop last night. He was putting a, uh, a power feed on his Z and his shaft is bent and it was just all wobbling. He did go through and tr took, trued it up some, but man, that would just drive me nuts to have that wheel there all out of true and wobbling around kind of like this guy back here. Um, but anyway, so I'm hoping that, uh, my workaround got that in there straight enough that, uh, when I thread the extension on there that uh, it's going to come out nice and not have any wobble to it. So I'm just getting started on making that part. So I'm getting ready to drill and tap the end of this and then I'll bring it down to size and uh, lop it off of here and uh, put it on the end there. Probably put it on with some Loctite. Um, not going to go with anything too intense as far as the Loctite. Probably won't use permanent unless I find out further on down the road that everything is totally cool and it's worth putting permanent on there because if I ever have to take that off, I'm not going to want to deal with it. Yeah, I can heat it up. I can get it off of there, but, you know, 
it's just a wheel like you know it just needs to be able to spin and not fall off so that's what i'm going to try to do now as far as i think when i left you last i was working on uh, this piece over here needed to be drilled and tapped M6 to match these two bolt holes. This all mounts up on there and stuff. Looks super pro. It's nice and straight. Everything's square. Um, so basically, this this is actually almost done. So I just need to make the extension. The extension does need to have a keyway milled into it um, to accommodate uh, the hand wheel. The hand wheel's got a key on it. And so... Oh, oh man, I just got home too. I ran out to the uh, to the hardware store to get some M6 stuff and I should have bought a key. Um, don't have one of those in stock and I'm going to need one. So it looks like I'll be going back down there. So <laughs> that's really pretty much, I actually I was joking on Facebook the other day about how many trips did this simple project take? I was re-screening all the screens for a house and it took me like four trips to Home Depot to get it done. So, yeah, anyway. So, uh, I guess I'm just going to get back into this and let you guys go. Later on, I will update one last time, hopefully, having this under power and running. I still need to do something with the, uh, the stops, too. You can see this device is the uh, travel limiter and is going to need to go on the front here. It looks like it's already got two bolt holes that, you know, maybe these are, they look about right. So I'm hoping that that's all going to line up and that getting that part of it done will be really easy. You know what I discovered yesterday that really bummed me out? <sighs> this strapping kit that I got off of Amazon, which has just been an absolute turd. It's like a perpetual burr. It like, it's awful. So look at, look at what they came up with to hold this stuff. There isn't even a second hole. They couldn't put a second hole for these things to slide down into. And so every time you pick this up, they just fall out. <laughs> Total turd. So anyway, um, the T-nuts, this is the correct size for this mill, but the T-nuts don't fit. And the thing is, this is a metric machine and this is a metric kit. This should fit. And these do fit, by the way, on the closing. So I've, you know, I'm going to need to make a bunch more of these anyways, the real truth of it. But, you know, I'm probably like five thou big. <laughs> so I'll be shaving all those down. This kit really has been bad. I, you know, I wish I could buy something that was of a bit higher quality. Um, I actually was up at Grizzly in Bellingham before I bought this. Actually, I ordered this from standing at Grizzly because they didn't have the proper size in stock and I really wanted to get one so I ended up with this turd but uh you know I probably would have gotten a better one if I and it would have cost a few bucks more if I'd gotten the one at Grizzly but they weren't in stock which was kind of a pain in the ass so anyway I'm done rambling about that uh, hold down that clamp down kit um so anyway I'm gonna get back to work and I will check in with you guys later on today hopefully with this running and done. Erica Secondary Machine, talk to you soon.